Hi everybody, my name is Brooke and I am a geologist. It's nice to see you again. And if you're brand new to the channel, then welcome. Why not subscribe and hit the notification bell. On this channel, we talk about everything that's geology themed. So rocks, minerals, fossils, all that kind of good stuff. And I'd hate for you to miss out on any future episodes. In today's episode, we're continuing our minerals theme and we're gonna look at one of the next common minerals that you're likely to find when you're out looking for rocks and fossils, and that's calcite and other carbonates. So let's get started. So why are carbonates and calcite in particular so interesting? Well, as Stuart Zewid Robinson would say, carbonates are carbograte. Carbonates are a major rock forming group of minerals on the Earth's surface. Not only that, but lots of organisms actually make their hard parts out of carbonates, particularly aragonite and calcite. So that means that lots of rocks that are made of fossils are also made of aragonite and calcite. So think of things like cockle shells, clams, mussels, cephalopods, corals, bryozoans, crinoids. But calcite and aragonite, calcium carbonate, aren't the only types of carbonate that we'll encounter when we're out looking for rocks and fossils. There's a whole range of them, and that's what we're going to look at today. So what are carbonate minerals then? Well, last time we looked at silica, and I said that if you start adding other elements like iron and aluminium and so forth, you can build up silica into silicate minerals like feldspars and olivines and garnets and all of that good stuff. Instead of a silica group, carbonates have a carbonate group, which is basically CO3. So that includes calcium carbonate, CaCO3, like this calcite rosette, through to more exotic things like the magnesium iron carbonate of this, and manganese of this rhodochrosite. And that's the pink stuff. The, the gold stuff is iron pyrite. And like silica, like chert, carbonate can precipitate out of seawater as well as being precipitated in hydrothermal settings. Even some igneous magmatic settings, there's carbonate, rare carbonate lavas called carbonatites. And also, as well as we well know, by living organisms themselves, like lots of invertebrates use calcium carbonate to make their shells and hard parts. In this episode, we're not going to look at any of the biogenic carbonates, so we're not going to look at any fossils. We'll do that in dedicated fossil episodes. We're just going to look at the abiotic mineral carbonates. Okay, let's get started. There's no better place to start with carbonates than looking at classic calcite. So this is a pretty much perfect crystal of calcite we've got here. You won't often find them like this in the wild. And if you see, it's basically like a wonky oblong or square. That's a rhombohedra. So this is the shape that calcite, siderite, and all of the other carbonates like to go, like to form when they've got the chance. So, cool trick if you've got a beautiful calcite crystal like this. It's if you put a piece of paper under it with writing on, the writing will appear double. I'll do a close-up of this because you can't see there. So this is the most common way we're going to find carbonates in the rock record. This is a lump of limestone and it's made of brachiopod and crinoid shells. So the brachiopod and the crinoids are calcite and then they're infilled with lime mud that's crystallized to calcite as well. So just in case you forgot what shelly limestone looks like. Well, you'll quite often find it in forms like this one that we looked at earlier, where the calcite has dissolved from shells and such like, and then it's grown and infilled into cavities. We call this SPAR, S-P-A-R, sometimes known as dog tooth as well. And this means that there was a carbonate rich fluid in a cavity within the rock and that the calcite was growing into it and it had plenty of space to grow into these nice large euhedral crystals. That's a really nice example there. Another kind of vein calcite you'll see is this fibrous stuff and what happens is normally there'll be a tectonic event and during say an earthquake lots of fluids will get pumped around and then when the pressure drops the minerals crystallize out rapidly and form this fibrous. It's curved as well because it's been on a fault plane and those, the faults have been moving in different directions. You might also find calcite like this, these rhombohedral rosettes. Now, the reason it's cloudy and you can't, not transparent like the other ones is because here the calcite has actually glued together sand. So this is something that's maybe originally been gypsum and then it's been replaced by calcite and it's glued together all of these sand particles, these quartz, detrital quartz grains into this beautiful 
rosette. You get speleothems, and that's the stuff that grows in caves, like stalagmites and stalactites, and cave coral and cave popcorn, and that's stuff like this. So if you ever go in limestone caves, this is the sorts of things you'll see on the wall, and it's where you've had calcite growing by droplets, leaving little traces of minerals over thousands of years, and it forms these weird bulbous things, looks like your taste buds. Oh, I'm getting tasted by the calcite. I'm so weird. That's enough about calcite, let's have a look at some of the other really interesting carbonates that we might find. So calcite is one of the more common forms of calcium carbonate that you'll find, but you also might find something like this. This is aragonite. It's also a calcium carbonate. It's a polymorph. It's the same ingredients, it's calcium, carbon and oxygen, but they're arranged in a slightly different way. This is what most modern mollusks and corals build their shells out of. Now it's unstable at Earth's surface temperatures and pressures. It generally forms abiotically in higher temperatures and pressures in deep underground. When it forms on the surface, under special conditions, or when biology is making it, when it gets fossilised, it then converts back into calcite. I've totally butchered that explanation, but it's close enough. Another very common carbonate that you'll find when you're out collecting is dolomite. Looks superficially the same as calcite, but it's actually magnesium and calcium carbonate, not just calcium carbonate. It still has the same rhombohedral habit, but if you look closely, you can see rather than being translucent, it has this sort of milky, pearly kind of sheen to it, like you'd expect it to be sort of soft and velvety rather than a hard mineral. And it comes in a variety of different forms as well, like lots of little rhombohedra here. This one's from all these big stacked intergrown rhombohedra. So if you take away, the calcite from our anchorite, and you have iron carbonate, that's siderite. And siderite looks like this. Again, you've got those ROMs, but they're kind of a little bit oxidized. So they go that kind of dirty, browny yellow color. So I'm kind of massively oversimplifying when I just say you swap the iron and the calcium around. They all tend to form under different chemical and environmental conditions. And, that, and finding these minerals, especially in sedimentary rocks, can tell you a lot about the environment that those rocks formed in and processes that have happened to them. I find a lot of siderite, for example, as a diagenetic product in some of the iron stones that I study. There's another really nice example of siderite there. Lots of uh, flattened blades, bladed rhombuses, rhomboids. Siderite always, also turns up in sedimentary rocks like iron stones and even in mudstones and shales. Here's a siderite nodule. Not very impressive, which is black because the siderite in it is so fine grained. So siderite is actually pretty common. You've probably seen it before, just never noticed it. So now we're going to get into some of the more exotic carbonates. I've saved the best, or at least the most colourful until last. First up, with one we saw earlier, is this world of crocite, which is manganese carbonate. And that's that lovely pink stuff we've got here, intergrown with that cuboidal pyrite. This needle-like mass and this kind of mass of stubby crystals, also like rhombohedral prisms, is cerocyte. And cerocyte is lead carbonate. They look like they'll be really light and you pick them up and they're strangely heavy and dense. That's because of all that lead in them. So these more exotic ones tend to form in kind of hydrothermal magmatic play, um, settings or where you've got metamorphism going on. Lots of metal rich fluids getting pumped through the, the crust and through uh, sedimentary rocks. These won't be forming at the heart of where you've got the magma intruding and things like that, but they will be forming around the edges of it. So if you want to go and look for fancy minerals, then looking around the edges of, say, a granitic intrusion. One of my personal favourite minerals, this is copper carbonate, also called malachite. We've got this botroidal, lumpy, and stromatolytic form here, mixed in with this blue mineral, which we'll look at in a second also forms these neat little tetrahedral crystals that look like uh, RPG gaming dice. And then these super cool bladed rhombohedral crystals. I promised I'd save you the most colourful and my favourite to last, and that's this stuff. As you write. Got another example of it here mixed up with malachite. And this is hydrated copper carbonate and it's absolutely stunning blue dark blue indigo color 
absolutely beautiful. Please don't pick out of this, and it's easy to see why. I hope you've enjoyed watching this episode as much as I enjoyed making it and getting to see all these cool minerals. If you've got any questions about carbonates or any cool carbonates of, of your own, then let me know down below. If you want to send me pictures of them, then you can pop over to Facebook and look for the Geology Johnson page, which is Facebook forward slash I dig fossils, link in the description below. And you can put your pictures there and anything that can help you identify things. If you're not already a subscriber, I'd really appreciate if you hit that subscribe button and notification bell and give the video a thumbs up. That would certainly help me out a lot and help get these videos out to other people who are interested in rocks and fossils and minerals. But until then, take care. See you later. Bye-bye. You could also mistake this for halite, sodium chloride, a salt, and there's an easy way to tell it's not. It doesn't taste salty. It actually tastes like all the greasy fingers of the younger guys. I forgot what they're called now. What is it? Christodism. Carbonates have got the rhombohoidal.